after the end of World War II, the United Nations General Assembly met in 1948 to adopt the Universal De Declaration of Human Rights. While for many people, when considering human rights, examples like the right to education and the right to life come to mind, it is important to remember that our human rights were formed as a collective result of the persecution inflicted on the Jewish community by the Nazis. It therefore comes as a surprise to me that for many of us, the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion comes as an afterthought when we consider our human rights, the legislation that provides us with so much of the freedom that we take for granted daily. It is clear that our human rights regarding religion are pushed aside by governments, if not outright ignored, providing an explanation for the widespread religious persecution that is prevalent across the globe. Religious persecution can be defined as the systematic mistreatment of an individual or a group of individuals as a response to their religious beliefs or affiliations or their lack thereof. Whenever religious persecution is discussed in modern day terms, the focus tends to be on issues such as the horrors of China's Uyghurism and genocide or the levels of anti-Semitism anti that aspects of our society are sickeningly riddled with. It therefore comes as a shock to me as it, will to be, as it will be to some of you, to learn that a 2019 report following the bombings of churches in Sri Lanka on Easter Sunday found that Christians are the most persecuted religious group across the globe. I'd like to carry out a quick survey of how many Christians you perceive to live in places where they may experience high levels of persecution and discrimination for their faith. I'll read out the options of 1 in 20, 1 in 7 and 1 in 13. And when I repeat them, please raise your hand for which one you believe to be most likely. Okay, so if you believe it to be 1 in 20, put your hand up. Um, 1 in 7? And 1 in 13? The correct answer is actually 1 in 7, which accounts for 360 million Christians worldwide. That's over a third of a billion of individuals from only one religious background who are not in a safe position to express their identity and belief. I find myself caught up in the question of why, as a society, we are so content to sit back and allow religious persecution to take place when it is an issue that hits so close to home. I'd like to introduce to you the story of Asher Sampson, a Christian man who was, who was deported to his country of birth, Pakistan, in 2019 at the age of 41. He first arrived in the UK in 2004 to complete his theology training in order to become pastor and was a regular churchgoer who spent more than 10 years as an active member of the Christian community. After his arrival, he later applied for asylum on the basis that he had received death threats from Islamic extremists when visiting home. With complete risk disregard for the grave danger he was in, his asylum claim was rejected in 2018. After being detained in an immigration removal centre, Asher Sampson was deported the day before he was due to submit fresh evidence for his asylum claim. When he arrived in Pakistan, he was followed upon his arrival at the airport and stones were thrown at the place that his cousin had arranged for him to stay. He is now forced to regularly move from accommodation to accommodation as it is too dangerous for him to stay in one place. He has no choice but to rely on his elderly mother to provide him with food and medicine which they are struggling to afford, as Asher is clearly unable to obtain an income when it is too dangerous for him to go outside. Asher Sampson's story provides us with the slightest snippet of insight into how millions of people around the world are suffering due to their religious beliefs, at the hand of our grotesque lack of compassion. While Asher was stripped of his independence and livelihood, thousands of other Christians face a much more severe fate. Between October 2020 and September 2021, over 3,800 Christians worldwide were abducted for faith-related reasons, while almost 5,900 Christians were killed for their faith, an increase of 24% from the previous year. It is therefore becoming increasingly clear that religious persecution is an ever-growing crisis that humanity is facing. So the question we are left to ask ourselves is whether now is the time for us to reevaluate how seriously we take our human rights.